G'day and welcome to the Mind Your Body Show. I am your host, Jacob Andre, and today I am talking to my business coach, Mike and Data. So if you'd like to know more about why small health and fitness businesses fail and the health hacks you can use to be successful, stay tuned. G'day and welcome to the show. I am your host, Jacob Andre, and today I am talking to my business coach, Mike and Data. Where last week in episode 32, I spoke to my business mentor, Lisi Kika of Studio Grow, CEO of Studio Grow. This week in episode 33, I'll be speaking to my business coach through Studio Grow, uh, Lisi's client services manager um, and my personal business coach, um, Mike. And so this was a really, really entertaining episode now i feel like i say that all the time like every episode so far it's been like this was so entertaining i just watched it back and i laughed the whole way through it and i suppose if i didn't laugh my way through it and didn't think it was entertaining then it probably would be a good episode would it so uh, in actual fact um this one i i did legitimately laugh my way through it was really entertaining and it was good to just reflect back on what we went through in our uh, episode where we got to sit down and chat with each other which was actually in october of 2020 so it is some time since we recorded but it is still still also relevant in terms of the topics that we spoke about um, i feel like we got a really good relationship and so we were able to get into some really um deep sort of conversation around important uh aspects of running a business in the health and fitness industry, particularly through COVID, um, as well as just some general uh, life hacks around health and fitness. So in this episode today, you're going to learn how to grow your way up to being, um, from being a ground level manager and ultimately your own studio um, owner. You're going to learn how Mike and helped one of the world's most successful boutique fitness studio owners grow and sell their businesses. How Mike can transition from her very good paying job and into starting her own business. The habits that allowed her to fly around the country as a regional manager of 30 plus locations while heavily pregnant and still doing all that she did. What eating healthy doesn't look like. How your diet affects your hair. The important role nutrition plays in restructuring your brain. Why using an online calendar to schedule absolutely everything is so important to success. The importance of meditation and how and why meditation can be done on the move. It doesn't need to be done stationary, either laying down or seated. Why Mikan would not go to college and would go straight into the workforce if she had her time over again. How a horrible interviewer can deliver the best interview. The number one thing that businesses that have flourished during COVID-19 have done that other businesses haven't the best marketing challenges to use during the holidays. Think Christmas, Halloween, Easter, these sorts of holidays. How a studio in New York signed up 53 new members in just one week during COVID. How hard sales versus soulful selling. How to sell without feeling too pushy. Why Mike and sold her studio in November 2019, right before COVID hit and even was really known to be a thing in the Western world. The power of manifestation the best money you can ever spend. The number one thing I'm trying to convince Mike of, and I think I may get there by the end of the episode, um, what you need to do when hiring someone, plus Mike's words of wisdom for any boutique fitness studio owner. This was, as always, an absolutely joyful time to sit down with Mike, and I am convinced you are going to laugh your way through this, be very entertained, you're gonna enjoy this episode. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Mike, welcome to the show, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I'm kind of nervous, but I'm excited. In a way, I'm kind of a little bit nervous too, because <laughs> I don't know if we should like point out to the audience um, our connection or relationship. Um, maybe we probably have to now because that sounds a little bit awkward and weird. But uh, <laughs> so you are my business coach um, and well, I have been working with you how long, a little while now in the last. So I think we worked together. You're my business coach as part of Studio Grow's uh, client cure. And then yep. from that, I started doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching with you, which I think we're about a quarter to a halfway through, which has mm -hmm. been very, very unique in 2020 and the COVID year. I think we go down as yeah. the, um, the COVID year. Yes. It's not COVID-19 anymore either. It's They've got a, you know, I, it's COVID-20, COVID-2020 <laughs> yeah. for sure. <laughs> So 
um, I'll let you introduce yourself a little bit. Just tell um, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be Mike in of today's day and age. Mike in today, 2020. Um, okay, well, if, if anybody does end up li listening to this who knows me, um, I, I don't like to talk about myself at all. So this is super uncomfortable and, and awkward for me, but I will do it my the best that I can. Um, yeah, I um, have always, I think since I could remember um, running around in diapers, I think even then I told myself I wanted to be a businesswoman. I wanted, I'm an entrepreneur, I wanted to be in business um, and wanted to do all things business. Um, and so I went to business school, marketing um, degree, all of that, and um, started pretty much from the ground up learning about fitness um, businesses. And I started as a manager, cleaned toilets, you know, did, you know, vacuumed and sold memberships and built relationships. Um, and then from there, I just dug, I surrounded myself with as much um, business people as I could, as, as I, you know, through my 20s and now into my 30s. Um, but I really dove in and it, it was almost like a, um, an addiction for me. I was constantly working. Um, cause I just wanted to know every aspect of a business and, and what it has, um, like what's inside of it when it comes to the health and fitness industry and how to be successful, because obviously, you know, we all know being in the boutique world, being micro gyms, it's, it's also one of the, one of the most, um, uh, you know, like these smaller businesses fail a lot easier. Right. So I wanted to know why, why are these businesses failing? Um, and because people need it, people need health, they need fitness, they need everything for their mind, body, and soul to just wake up in the morning and do something. And so I didn't understand why all these businesses, why the health and fitness industry was failing so much. Um, so I just dove deep into the business and I grew my way up um, from a, a ground level manager to ultimately being an owner myself um, and met um, Lisi, who is the, um, co the founder of Studio Grow, and I helped her with her businesses, and I helped her sell her businesses, and now I've, you know, turned, I was her first um, coach in Studio Grow, and that brings me today. So, and technically I am, I am um, no longer a true, just a coach in Studio Grow, I'm the head of client services and consulting, so um, it's been, it's been a whirlwind, but it's been good. Oh, well, I didn't realize that. Congratulations on you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you obviously talking about Lisa Kika, who is also a guest on the Mind Your Body show. And tell me a little bit about how that relationship started. So you wanted to, um, get into business and you're interested in mm -hmm. being a businesswoman. Um, so you were managing and stuff. How did you first meet Lisa? Um, it was, it was, you know, the stars were aligned, um, it, really crazy, crazy, craziest way possible. Um, you know, so if you believe in the manifestation and you believe in all like the universe bringing things together, like this was the ultimate way. And it just all worked out the way it was supposed to. I was in, uh, I was, you know, I was a, a regional manager, um, for, uh, 33 location franchise and in my area and I was also seven months pregnant with my second child um, and it just kind of came to a cross crossroad where I've hit the ceiling and I couldn't go anymore I wasn't happy um, and I knew it was just time to find something else so I kind of took the plunge and in in the in and while all this was kind of going on and kind of you know manifesting itself I then also became a, a real estate agent got my realtor's license and um, I, I had that, so I fell back onto that because I walked away from, from my very good paying um, regional manager position. And, but I wasn't done being in the fitness industry, obviously. I just didn't know where to go. And my business mentors hooked me up and connected me with um, Lisa at the exact time that she, um, she literally was she, and I hope she's okay with me saying this, but you know, it was, she, she kind of had a a, 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 a moment where she just felt like nothing was working 
for her in, in her businesses and and she had a night where she was just crying and so and the next day um uh, she had a phone call from my business mentor saying that I'm looking for something and it was exactly what she was looking for and so we came together and um, she talked her and I talked for an hour and a half two hours while she was driving from North Carolina back to or South Carolina to North Carolina where she was living and it just it worked and so um, the next month I at that moment um, I was then eight and a half closer to nine months pregnant. I traveled to all of her locations um, and stayed a week at each one of her locations. So I was gone for the entire month of April, eight, nine months pregnant, flying. Um, and uh, yeah, it just went from there. And and that's kind of how we met. That is how we met. It kind of, it's really, it feels um, very, I don't know what the word is, but it, it's interesting to me to hear this story because I first met, first met Lucy and her husband Dan in Laguna Beach in 2015, June 2015. And she was talking then about selling her, um, her businesses, her studios. And I think it might've been just before that. So it kind of feels really amazing to hear this story from the, another point of view because she talked a lot about you. I reckon that you must've met her before that because I'm sure she's yes. talking about you. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, I think we met 2000, I think we met um, two th January 2015. Oh, that, so that's very close to then. So June 2015, yeah. and she was talking about how amazing you were then and how much of a godsend you were to her. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and I think she had just sold her studios uh, for quite a profit and um, maybe sold all of them actually and was going into the online world and that's why the we mall, met. Yep. Yeah. yep yep she was and she had something brewing in the background that i didn't know anything about until she sold her last location her last studio and then she called me up and said okay i want you to let i want you to to read all of this and i want you to give me feedback and then i want you to come on board with me and be my my first coach and you know let's do this and so let's do it so we did it <laughs> And so, of course, you're talking about Lisa Kika, who's from Ready Aim Empire podcast, very, very um, popular podcast. Mm -hmm. But in that time, in that April where you're flying around and you were so heavily pregnant, tell me about that. What was that like for you in terms of your own mental health, especially, but also physical health? Yeah, um, heavily, heavy is the key word, heavy. <laughs> but um, yeah, I looking back now, like I just shake my head. Like, what were you thinking? Um, and up until, you know, that, I mean, I, I worked out at almost every day um, through both my pregnancies. Um, and, you know, that obviously played a huge role in being able to sustain all these, you know, airline flights and, and layovers and then, you know, sleeping in, in hotel rooms and then going in and working eight, nine, 10 hour days inside the locations. Um, I mean, it, I honestly, I shake my head at it, but um, really, yeah, I mean, because of my passion and um, habit of, you know, working out and and um, I ate super healthy when I, when I was pregnant, um, I, I couldn't have done it. I, I don't know how I did it in the first place, but I couldn't have done it if I didn't already have, you know, just that mentality of health and fitness and, and living a healthy lifestyle for sure. Um, plus, you know, I mean, I had been in, I had, I had been, I had been in, um, you know, the fitness industry working obviously as a regional director for, you know, five, six plus years at that point. And so um, it was just ingrained in me. Yeah. So what does, when you say eating healthy, what does that mean to you? What does that look like? Um, well, it doesn't look like the nachos that I had a few hours ago. <laughs> so we won't bring that up. <laughs> I love nachos. Nachos, seriously, are my favorite meal. I went to a Mexican restaurant the other night and they were like, and my mate um, knew the owner and we were sitting there sort of having a laugh. And I said, I just want the nachos. Any Mexican is my favorite cuisine and nachos is my favorite dish of any Mexican. And yeah. <laughs> I ordered the nachos and even the owner was like, why are you getting nachos? This is the best Mexican restaurant in Darwin, like my home city. And they're like, get something good. And I was like, no, I just want the nachos. Nachos are the best. Actually, in fact, the best nachos I've ever tasted was in San Diego. Really? 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I haven't had these in a very long time, um, but I love the Taco Bell nachos. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have Taco Bell here. <laughs> you don't have Taco Bell? No, no, we don't. Really? Oh, yeah. okay. Never I'll mind. Well, when, when you come back, yeah. when you come back to the States, then you'll have to have a gordita crunch and um, the nachos. Um, all super processed artificial foods, but so good. Um, I, actually, when I, I, Lacey and Dan took me out for lunch one day when I was in Laguna, and I, I think they kind of took me under their wing, almost like I was this poor abandoned little boy. Um, but I, although I was probably 32 at the time, but um, they were just so nurturing and caring, and they took me out and I had a chimichanga. I've never, I, I haven't heard of it from, what was the movie? Oh, good. Little Fockers. Um, that movie, and so I didn't know what chimichanga was, and I saw it on the menu, and I was like, I'm getting one of these. Oh, they're so good because they're the fried, they're fried, right? Yeah. Yes, I love. Yeah, I love that. That's so good. Yeah. Um. Anyways, well, the question: What does healthy mean to me? Um, eating healthy, yeah. Yeah, eating healthy. Um, you know, it's. It, and and I'll be, you know, I'll be honest. Like since I left. Um, when I left my my career um, with the 33 locations and then um, started working from home, um, it's been a big change for me. Um, I think that that has probably been the toughest thing for me as far as like tra um, transitioning to working from home all the time um, because, um, you know, I was just so used to just, I was always up and always being so active and I had set times when I would eat, like I ate like a... Um, you know, like a, a bodybuilder, not a bodybuilder, but the other one, um, and where they perform and stuff with, sorry, my cat is on the sink, but um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely been a transition. And so, you know, my health has not been on point as it should, um, but I've been very focused um, as of recently by um, building my meals around protein. Um, I realized that I just was not eating, getting enough protein. Um, and the funny thing is, is once I started doing that, this is actually the beginning of the year, I've started to focus on, you know, building my, my meals around the protein where I always have the protein and then I build the, the vegetables and, and carbs around that. But um, my aunt is my hairstylist and she, I, she had no clue that I was, you know, refocusing my efforts on my eating and, stuff like that and she when she did my hair for the first time this year um in February I think it was no it was June it was June and um she asked me if my diet changed because she could tell a difference in my hair um and she said are you eating more protein and I'm like yeah I've been really upping my protein in in water and take two and she's like yeah I can tell because this is what happens with your hair when um, you eat cleaner and you eat more protein. And I just thought that, that was crazy. Um, and, and she said, it, you know, that my hair was was much like, you know, I, I don't know what, what it was, but she she could tell and she didn't even know. Um, so yes, eating, eating um, healthy to me means, you know, just being more aware of what's being put on my plate because I'm really noticing now that I'm 36, um, I cannot, just eat whatever I want and it sucks. It really sucks. Like I am going to probably regret, you know, when I step on the scale at the end of the week, eating those nachos because, <laughs> you know, it's just, I mean, it's, it's hard. And the metabolism is definitely not there anymore. Like it used to be in the twenties. And I'm, and I feel like I have to just, I have to believe that I have to come to terms with that um, because I've been refusing to come to terms with it over the last few years. So yes, the healthy eating, I restructured my mindset around it and I'm really just trying to adapt my three meals and my two snacks around protein and then making sure I'm getting enough vegetables and fruit. So was that just a little side comment to say step on the scales at the end of the week or is that something that's part of your everyday routine where every week at the end of the week you step on the scales? Yeah, I, I'm, I have been. Um, uh, you know, I can't, I can't, I really can't do it every single day. I just can't, it's just a, a mental thing. I just don't want to have to do it, but I do do it each week because I have kind of my own goals that I'm shooting for. Um, and with this restructuring of my brain 
and taking better care of myself. It's kind of a weekly thing that I'm focused on when I step on the scale. But the scale doesn't matter, and I truly believe that. You know, so I do go with my normally how my clothes are fitting and stuff, but it is once a week usually. And so what do you mean when you say restructuring your brain? That's a comment that really interests me. Yeah, right. It's like such a business business comment, I think. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I went through a tough last three years um, and I definitely wasn't taking care of myself the way that I should. Um, and now like my mindset is shifted and it's, and it's back to, you know, Mike, and you need to start taking better care of yourself because you have to accept the fact that you're 36 and your metabolism is not a 26 year old metabolism anymore. Um, and you just have too much to do throughout the day to not have enough energy to do it all. Um, and so I just have really been restructuring it to be more aware of what I'm doing on a daily and nightly basis. And that is starting with my nutrition. And so minus, minus, I have to admit this. I have to say this and admit it to you and everybody else that's listening because I feel guilty talking about this. Um, last night, my best friend from Austin came home and we may or may not have drank all the wine in my little town. <laughs> but I am back on the saddle today. <laughs> I, I kind of think there's a theme here. Is that, is, I'm pretty sure there's a few stories around wine because when I was in Chicago in 2019, I'm pretty sure you went out and had a couple of glasses of wine then too. <laughs> I love, who doesn't love wine? It's so healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, I, it is, it's very nice. <laughs> Um, personally, on currently right now this month, I'm on a completely clean, like nothing, no sugar, no alcohol, not even any coffee. But I, I can't talk. Good for you. Person. I love, love yeah. alcohol, and I love. I was on, I was on seven, and <laughs> I was doing really well. Um, I wanted to do the no alcohol in October, and my best friend ruined it. He ruined it. <laughs> he had to come home <laughs> the month that I was going to go no alcohol. So now I'm starting today. Okay. <laughs> um, I've completely forgotten what I was even going to talk about. Um, what my next point was. Um, oh, morning routines. So uh, just as I'm gonna let, just as you go and have a drink of like two liters of water um, to flush that wine out of your system. What do your what do your morning and evening routines look like then? Because you are so busy. Like I'm so interested in what happens in your daily life because I think how do you fit everything in? Yeah, um, I mean, it's a, it's an ongoing struggle, obviously, like everybody else. Um, again, I have to come to terms with the fact that there's only 24 hours in a day and there will never be more than that. But um, I, um, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how I do it. I just, my, actually, as I'm looking at my second screen here, I have my calendar up and I guess the first thing where I would first start would be my calendar like I just if my, if Google calendar went away like my life would crumble um, so everything is is in my in my calendar at every meeting every you know time where I'm just doing internal work or I'm just doing email work or following up with emails or whatever I need to do um, it's all in my calendar and so if I didn't have that that would be very tough so that really kind of keeps me going throughout the day. Um, I, I actually do have in here self-care. Um, my self-care is um, from 5.30 to 8 a.m. is my self-care. So between that time frame, you know, if I get up at 5.30, which I usually do between 5.30 and 6.30, um, I make sure that the first thing I do is I meditate. I have to meditate. If I don't meditate, my entire day is off. Um, and that's become, um, and I'm very proud of myself for this. This has become um, a daily habit where um, I started this two years ago um, and, and it was a, because I have really bad anxiety. And so I had to do something else um, besides work out to help with my anxiety and meditation just, I think it like saved my life because it is just the most amazing thing to do for yourself. Um, and I have to do it every day. Um, even if it's just five, five minutes, 
Um, I will meditate for five minutes. Um, even if I'm out walking my dog, I'll meditate while I'm walking. But it's whatever the meditation, I just have to get it in. Um, and that really just kind of helps me center myself for the rest of the day. And I feel very more productive um, because when I meditate, if I don't meditate, I. I am not productive whatsoever. I'm kind of all over the place. Um, and I have to go and meditate then to bring myself back in. So, and I think that's the biggest thing. And, but my calendar is, it's, it is like my, my little assistant um, in my lap, so. So when you're talking about meditation, what type of, are you, what type of meditation? Are you following an app uh, on your phone or are you sitting and just concentrating on breathing? I have to, right now I have to have guided meditation I'm working on being able to do it on my own um, without the guided meditation but I just I YouTube it I don't have an app I used to have an app um, and I really like that app I would use it on airplanes and it would make me fall asleep like instantly but um, so I used to travel all the time but um, yeah I just YouTube it um, I, I really like to do I, I do a couple meditations if I have the time so if I meditate in the morning before I get out of bed, it's usually just a morning meditation of positivity and getting ready for your day. And then if I have time, I will do the second meditation where it's manifesting like what I want in, in life um, because I truly believe in manifestation. And so I'll try to do a, a manifestation meditation um, at least once a day too. So have you ever done, have you heard of the Wim Hof Method? Okay, so Wim Hof is this Dutch guy who's a little bit crazy. He's all about breathing in cold water. So he jumps in like frozen, like rivers and lakes and stuff like that. And they've done all this testing on him. And he has, uh, you know, like shown that he can dramatically lower his heart rate. Um, and he can sort of sit in this freezing cold water for extended periods of time and all this kind of stuff. It, I think you should look into it. I've been starting to do that. And the relaxation, it's Wim Hof. So Wim, W-I-M and Hof, H-O-F. And he calls it okay. Wim Hof Method. There's an app. Um, there's a website. There's some free videos on YouTube. I just Googled him or YouTubed him on YouTube and um, come up with this 10 minute one that he has for free. And from that was absolutely hooked. I heard about him years ago and thought, oh, no, I'm a bit too scared to muck around with breathing and holding my breath because a lot of it is holding your breath. Mm -hmm. And now I try and do it every morning and night if I can. Sometimes in the morning I don't have time, so I just do one round, like one lot of holding your breath. And then at night time, I try and do three. And so when I started, I was holding my breath. So you do sort of the basic version of it is 40 breaths in and out, as he's saying it, breathe in, breathe out. And then you hold your breath for as long as you can. And so when I started, it was for a minute and a half. And now I'm up to about three minutes. And wow. seriously, the re the relaxation is phenomenal. Like you feel it's better than any meditation I've ever done. You just feel completely relaxed. And it lasts, it seems to me that it lasts a lot longer as well. And I just, yeah, it's just amazing. Like I highly recommend checking okay, it out. Okay, I'm excited. I'm excited. Thank you. Um, okay, so when you also mentioned going for a walk with your dog, how do you meditate while you're walking? Because I've had this, suggested to me that because I love to run and it was a cooking teacher at a school one day that said to me Jacob you need to do some meditation you need to relax and for you you enjoy running so that meditation for you might be running um, so I tried to pay attention to how I would how I'd be meditating while I was running so what does that look like for you while you're walking your dog um it's a lot of breathing um and uh, a lot of times the, the walking ones are just having you um, just uh, more so thinking of, of gratitude and what you're grateful for and then just deep breathing as you go. Um, so I don't have to close my eyes or anything. I'll do it when I'm driving too. Um, and it's really, it, it really is just the, mostly the breathing, you know, taking the deep breaths in, holding it, you know, taking them out and then um, and then saying or thinking, you know, of, of things that you are grateful for and, and just overall gratitude. Yeah, for me, the reason why I ask is, and I don't want to sort of predict and jump into what you might have said. For me, going for a run when I was trying to do it was to try and listen to the birds and like what sounds, particularly natural sounds, if I could, because often cars sort of overtake that sound, but what 
sounds I could hear in nature or what could I feel. So I was really trying to pay attention to the feeling of the air going past my skin, yep. Um, yep. the feelings inside my body, all that kind of stuff. Yep, yep, and, and just being more aware of um, the surroundings and the nature and, and appreciating what's around you. Um, a lot of it, you know, goes into that too. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's go right back because I want to see if we can bring in some more of that business mentality to this episode. Um, and I want to know more about the real estate stuff. How did that come about? So you said from a child, you wanted to be in business um, hmm. and then you got into being the regional manager for these 33 stores of this franchise. At what point did you do the real estate ticket and why was that? Um, I actually have always wanted to do real estate. Um, I started to minor in economic development in college, um, but uh, I had some I had some things happen in college where it just it was too much, so I, I couldn't do I couldn't do a, um, a minor. Um, and yeah, I just always wanted to. I just always wanted to get into into real estate, and it had been about four years that I'd been talking back and forth with people and brokers and and um you know what you need to do and the purpose of it and um you know pros and cons and all of that and finally i just said um you know screw it and and i did it um and the i guess the the other the underlining um reason behind it is i've always read and i've always read articles and books and they always it always comes back to um what what do millionaires do like how are millionaires successful millionaires on average have about seven streams of income right and so to me right now that is my second stream of income um where my goal is to get to actually four or five streams of income and not necessarily where i have to you know have a, an extra a, a third full-time job or a third part-time job it's something that is reoccurring revenue for me that's coming in where you know, obviously everybody wants that, um, but um, that is one of my goals over the next three years is how do I bring in one to two more streams of income and then three to, you know, four years after that, how do I bring in the rest of the, um, you know, four or five streams of income? So, so how, to me, it's a second stream of income. How do you do that? Like, is that something that you would need to spend more time doing yourself or is that where you hire help? Like, how does that sort of work? For the extra, for the other streams of income yeah. or for real estate? Uh, for the extra streams of income. Well, um, I mean, if anybody has any, any, you know, ideas, let me know. Um, I don't necessarily know. Um, I invested in, I purchased um, my second home. Well, I had a home and then I, relationships, you know, it didn't work out. And so I moved out. Um, and then this is the first home that I've ever purchased on my own. Um, it's a, it's a, a true opportunity to either have as a rental at some point or an Airbnb. And so that is kind of the next focus for me is how do I get into that third stream of income um, where, you know, it potentially could be a rental or an Airbnb. And so I don't think that's going to be all on me. Um, uh, that's going to be, um, you know, me having to put in the extra effort and all that to make sure that that happens. Um, I don't, I, I would love to have an assistant or a virtual assistant or somebody to help me get to that point, but I just, I'm not ready for that yet. Um, but after the third stream of income is, is created and, and started and, and growing, then yeah, I don't know. I don't know what my fourth stream of income is going to be. So it might involve somebody else. You know, there's a really good video on how to hire a virtual assistant on Revenue Remedy. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> have you seen it yet? Um, I have not. It's on my list. I have a, I have um, sticky notes all over my computer and that's one of them is to listen to that. People won't know what I'm talking about, but I recorded a video for Lisa, Lisa Kika's Revenue Remedy program yes. and so awesome. uh, it's on how to hire a virtual assistant. It's quite embarrassing actually because I was just getting stressed out. It wasn't working. I was having multiple attempts and like yeah well, i just look in my eyes i looked super tired because that was like I had that many goes at recording it <laughs> <laughs> oh well lisa loved it i know that she talks about it a lot in our slack channels so oh, that's good um all right so what's let's go I, I feel like there's something missing here in terms of i want to know more about 
those years at university or college and going into the business side of things you would what let's go I don't know what question I'm asking but let's go right to what did you study at college what was like your you mentioned a minor but it didn't happen what were you studying marketing I, I was studying marketing and my professor told me that I will never be successful in marketing and that I should just give it up right now because I failed a few classes here and there and didn't I, do very well. I love and that. So, I love when people say that. <laughs> yeah, I know. And so when I actually became a regional director, um, I sent him an email and told him and reminded him about it <laughs> and kind of rubbed it in his face and said, you know, screw you. <laughs> Did you write back? No. <laughs> <laughs> And no. so, okay, so then when you finished, then is, did you go straight into that role with that franchise? No, um, I was just kind of a fish out of water. I had always been a bartender. Um, so I was a bartender for about 10 years. And so I just graduated college. I didn't even walk. I just was whatever. I just wanted to be done. Um, it actually took me six years because um, I did um, take a semester off <laughs> and school just never was for me. I just followed the, the norm of society um if i could go back and change i would not go to college i would go right into the the workforce because when i did become a manager um with with this with the with a micro gym um franchise i mean i probably learned more in that first month of training about business and marketing and in everything than i did in six years of college um and i they would have hired me even if i didn't have a degree and so um, it, it really was the, the, the real world um, experiences that I think, you know, has obviously molded me into my position, but I mean, kind of where I'm at now, but um, yeah, I mean, it, college, just wasn't, my college just wasn't my thing. I didn't get anything out of it, really except a degree that I didn't even walk through. So where the business side of that kind of started was, um, you know, when I, when I jumped into and, and went in and, and interviewed for this general manager position and i literally emailed the my my now he turns he turned into my business mentor one of them besides lisa um i literally emailed him and said you have to interview interview me i don't I like i'm coming and you're going to interview me and i walked in i had a marketing plan of how i was going to make sales and and um increase revenue and and sell memberships and everything and to this day he said it was the best interview he's ever had and i'm a horrible interviewer like horrible um that was the last interview i've ever done in my entire life and i don't want to have to ever interview ever again because i really am horrible at interviewing that's awesome yeah but i but, but i bartended up for i graduated in 2009 and i bartended um uh that whole year until when did I have my kid? Oh, I had my kid in 2010. And so I bartended all the way up until um, I had my kid, literally nine and a half months pregnant. And I was bartending, you know, double shifts and everything, whatever I could to make that money, you know? And, um, and then after that, I gave it up after the kid was born, my son. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you, I don't know, you kind of sound very, I can see a little bit of a mirror here. To myself but it sounds like you are very very driven and yeah um, yeah yeah i always have been probably to a fault um but i am like i'm like a completely different person in my personal life than business like my friends when they hear me on meetings or first of all they don't even know what i do they don't I have no clue right you know as outside of of um of uh, being a real estate agent, but now with, with um, Studio Grow, they have no clue what I do. And so if they hear me talking, they're like, holy cow, like you are a totally different person than in, in, in than when we just hang out. But um, yeah, there's, it's definitely a, a driven factor that can be kind of to a fault. So as the head of client services with Studio Grow, what are some of the common things that come up? You, you must be seeing, do you have a few clients, a few business clients? Uh, yes, I do. I mean, I, yeah. I, have, a, I have a good chunk of, of, of clients still, yes. And what, what are some of the most common things that you see that people struggle with? Um, well, I mean, obviously right now it's the pandemic. Um, it's been very, I, you know, it's been very hard 
to hear our clients' stories. Um, many of our clients have, have closed. Um, clients have filed for bankruptcy. Um, like it's not a pretty picture um, on the other end, definitely. But um, you know, we but we do have so many clients who have even who have flourished through the pandemic um, uh, be, because of the coaching that they've gotten prior to that, um, and that you know they made they made the right choices at that moment and and it got them through the pandemic um but you know it's it, and i can't even imagine you know how they feel i mean i sold my business last november and it makes me sick just thinking if i hadn't you know sold it and still having it you know how that would have gone and so i'm just very grateful that i sold it in time again the universe kind of just came together um but i mean it yeah i mean the biggest thing a lot of things, right? But it's always the same thing. I mean, a lot of our clients struggle with um, cash flow. M the majority of our clients, 97% of our clients, probably they don't pay themselves and they haven't seen a paycheck um, since they've started their business because, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of a, a common denominator where our clients were the best instructor, they have the most experience. Um, at, all the all the clients always wanted to go to them and so they thought they to themselves had a had a thought that hey i think i'm gonna open my own business because um you know i'm I, i'm they're better than than most teachers and instructors out there which is totally true but they were never taught business right and so it's a totally different ball game when you open your own studio versus being a teacher you know or an instructor or the best instructor or the best teacher and and so the, a lot of struggles are just not having an understanding of how to truly run your business um so yeah yeah that's pretty powerful and what would you say like what is it that those businesses are doing the people in those businesses are doing that have flourished through COVID-19 there must is there like one if you could put your finger on one thing what would it be that they have done that maybe those others hadn't um well it's it's one thing that they have done um that maybe even some have done as well but the one main thing is memberships right there they they were focused on having that sustainable revenue every single month um you know it, it's it's just been that mindset in the boutique industry um and training industry that you know they they pay in full um, they provide a discount to pay in full. Um, they have majority class packs or they <clears throat> have a discounted single session or the single session is not high enough. Um, that's where they are. They get in trouble because, you know, every month it's the same thing then they might have made, they may have made um, their bills. They paid their bills and, and made their break even point or their expenses for the month of September, but now we have to do it all over again in October. We have to put in so much effort to bring in these paid in fulls and to bring in class packs and to get people to purchase the drop-ins. Um, and, and there's no predictability. Um, and when you project your business out a month, two months, three months, there's no revenue there because we don't have any reoccurring revenue that's happening. And so um, that is the number one biggest, um, uh, you know, either um, a thing that saves them or is the the biggest um, reason that potentially you know a studio can't be saved is because they don't have that reoccurring membership mindset mm. and so you mentioned that you sold your business in November of 20 no there's the cat sorry <laughs> Simba I'm sorry I was about to say is, how many cats do you have I have one I'm not a cat person either but um, I do really like black cats for some reason. And so this one like called my name, so I took it. Does that mean you like <laughs> Halloween as well? <laughs> actually, I do like Halloween. It is actually one of my, my favorite um, holidays. Yeah, I, I love Halloween. So with the business theme and the Halloween, what is the best marketing um, sort of little challenge or idea that you know of around, I'm putting you massively on the spot here around <laughs> Halloween. Is there something that, because I know inside Revin Remedy and that there's a lot of different little challenges at different times of the year, Christmas in July and all those sorts of things in the Christmas tree um, where you get like little vouchers and stuff to come off it. What is the best one for Halloween? Um, 
So, and actually, I just had a client call yesterday, um, and I thought it was, uh, uh, I thought it was such a great idea. They're doing the Christmas, they're doing the Christmas tree sale, but but they're doing the Halloween, Halloween candy sale or something. And they're doing the same concept, but for Halloween. And it's been really, it's been really good for them. Um, where they have like, you know, certain levels of, of memberships to purchase and only, they can only purchase a certain number of them. And um, so that's been really good for them. Uh, we talked about also that they're going to, for the rest of the month, do a, like a trick or treat um, promotion where, um, you know, if they, if they buy, somebody buys a membership, they get to go and pick a, a treat out of the bucket and that might get them their next month free or that might get them you know um, a, a mat or that might get them you know whatever it might be you know that get some little things um, but but they have to purchase a membership or be a, a member who just purchased something um, and uh, so I thought that was cute um, I actually had a member for, in New York um, uh, email me the other day and telling me that she did a um, one week special and signed up 53 new members in one week wow. 12 month memberships yes um, and she it was she has a very big list though you know so she she already has that going for her but um, I she all she did was discount her first month um, like half off or something and she just she she planned it out all the email communications she said it was her hardest sell sale that she's ever done you know and and we don't we, we don't do hard sales right like we're all soulful selling here in studio grow but but the fact what she means by the hard sell sale is that it she was constantly asking for the sale um and it's just such a game changer when you go from which is which is pretty normal as well when we get clients that come to us um they aren't asking for the sale right they're relying on the members or these prospects or these people who come through and try the studio out whether it's a drop in an intro or class pack they're relying on on them to make a decision because they don't want to be too pushy well i mean it, you're in business because you were you feel like you're the best teacher out there right the best instructor that you provide the best service why the hell would you not ask them to stay at your business like it's just it's common sense right but it just doesn't happen because we're for some reason we're afraid to ask for money or we're afraid to sound like we're being too pushy and so the fact that she just asked for the sale i mean it 53 new members in a week in new york huge <laughs> Especially with, uh, I'm imagining New York probably at that point is still quite in lockdown, wouldn't it be? Oh, they're not open. Yeah, New York. This was last week that she sent me this email or two weeks ago. They're they're not opening for the rest of 2020. Um, yeah. They can't. Um, and so she's put everything. You know, she has put everything virtually, um, but um, she just created such value and urgency and asked for the sale over and over again. That I mean, yeah, people want to stay with her because she is the best just just ask people and they'll say yes some will say no so you know but most will say yes that's amazing you have so many ideas around business and you you personally have so many ideas but then in your role you must get to you know sort of brainstorm so many other amazing ideas i know it's no wonder that lisi loves you and has paid you head of client services Aww. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I think that it's the strategy, it's the, it's the strategic thinking behind the scenes that excites me um, the most, is being able to help strategically figure out how, how to bring in revenue and how to, you know, keep members and clients coming. What is it that's the best thing for you about being a business coach, particularly for boutique fitness studios? Um, so it, it goes back to, you know, just being a general manager and um, I, you know, I, again, I don't like talking about myself, but I, I mean, in, in this instance, I'll take advantage of it. Um, my, my first, um, my first fitness location that I managed was actually, um, usually in like the top 10, um, for highest revenue, most members and best retention, um, in the entire nation out of this franchise right um and so we were constant we were constantly in the top 10 out of it was like 3,000, 4,000, you know locations um at that time i think it was like 2,000 locations but it still to this day it's in the top 100 um location but 
um, that moment of being um, a general manager, first time general manager, running my own lo one location, um, the, the, the impact with our members, right? The impact, the results that our members would get. Um, I, um, when I owned my own facility, one of our members actually became the national member success story of this franchise. Um, he was brought to California, he was on stage, he got an award because he had lost so much weight, you know, and, and it was the success, right, that, that really drove me to keep going with, with um, you know, as, as an owner and, as, and at that time, the manager. So it's the same thing with my clients, right? Like, um, I, not only do I love hearing the success of them getting 53 new members or just getting two new members, because they haven't been signing any members up because they haven't been asking them to sale. Just hearing them get two new members um, and the excitement in their voice is just, I mean, it's out of this world. Like, I can't even explain how it feels, right? Like even the small wins are just like the, the best thing to hear. But the other thing is when I'm on the call with clients and then I, I, I hear a light bulb go off in their head. Like, oh my gosh, you're right. Like that's it it works like this actually works um and and then he, knowing that they're trusting the process i think that's the biggest thing that that keeps me coming back with clients you know i mean there's there's going to be times when you know and i and i got an email today about it where um you know no clients have come in the usage is down um nobody's bought the intros nobody's you know purchased new members and and there's lots of variables that go behind that and there's always going to be that type of email and that type of conversation um, with clients but the ones where I'm coming out of the call feeling very energized because the the client was just so happy that they sold two members because they haven't sold them or a light bulb went off about um, a follow-up process or how to look at their numbers and analyze their numbers like that like that like makes all the other calls and, and emails um, okay. I think you're in the right place at this point right now in your life because I can hear the passion in your voice as you talk about this. You said you sold your business in November 2019. What was the major reason behind that if you're able to share? Um, I was a remote owner. Um, and it can be it, it and, and it can be done. It can be done successfully. Lisa did it successfully for however many years she had her locations. Um, and and mine mine was doing just fine, but um, I could my my energy and my efforts towards it was was getting smaller and smaller because what I was doing here, you know, with Studio Grow and real estate, and then my two boys getting bigger um, and getting more active. Um, I also, you know, parted ways with um, with my kid's dad at at that time, you know, the last you know few three years, and so it just I think I was shifting my my timeline like I was shifting myself in in my life at that moment and I could just feel that it just wasn't right for me um, and again the universe took off manifestation took off um, it, last March was when I was when I decided I made the decision that I was gonna sell and um, in my mind I had, I had told myself that I would sell by um, you know like October of last year and it it, it was supposed to happen in October. My closing was supposed to happen in October and then I got pushed to November. Um, but it still shows the the power of manifestation um, because it happened at around the same time that I thought it was going to. Um, but it also with that, I went through three buyers. Um, the first two didn't pan out um, and that's fine because the person that needed to be in that spot um, came and he was actually a member. And um, so he took over and, and it was a great transition. I'm so intrigued by this whole remote owning thing. How far away was it from where you live? I mean, I'm in Wisconsin, right? So here's, here's the States. I'm in Wisconsin. My club was here in South Carolina. Oh, long so, way away. Long ways, yes. Yeah, it, you know, I've driven it. It was 16 hours one way, so 16 hours away. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long way. Um, uh, seriously, I could talk to you for another three hours, but I'm wary of your time because I know how busy you are and you've probably like got it right down to the minute of how much time you scheduled <laughs> me in here. True, true though, isn't it? Look at you coming, yeah. Tommy. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, we we have it for I have it for another half hour in my calendar. Yeah, because I like to be able to chat a little bit afterwards. Um, so that's why I've, I always like to try and get an hour and a half in, and, and who knows? So we we can keep chatting, but. I've got a feeling this could potentially go for a little bit longer because I always finish off with a 10 in 10, as you know, and yep. that is 10 quick. I'm excited for that. In 10 seconds. We never stick to the 10 seconds. So I don't know, I'm gonna have to change a name for it. Um, and it's not even 10 questions, it's 10, it might even just be a word and you just give me the first thing that comes to mind. You can give me a one word response or a full 10 minute response. Um, oh, I'm nervous. I, I think there's a couple of, ones here that could potentially turn into much longer than 10 second responses <laughs> all right so are you, are you ready to go are you all excited I for mean, this 10 and 10 let me let me take a drink out of my gallon <laughs> that, that is a massive water bottle if anyone is watching this on you if you're not watching this on youtube then you need to go watch and the i will version. drink it by the before i go to bed i'll drink it what time is it there at the moment actually um at 4 58 p.m oh, okay and so where have your kids gone this afternoon well they're with their dad Oh, okay. So it was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect timing. Because mm -hmm. um, or I'm just going to call you out here publicly because, and we can cut it later if you don't like me saying this, but we did try to schedule this in previously and your kids were sick. Um, and you said to me, I don't know how you do it as a single father with four kids on your own. And um, yeah. it's, it's all about routines. It's about yep, routines. That's what you said. Yeah. So, yep. I'm sure. I yeah, well, and that's and that's kind of where I, you know, it's it's a different. I'm a different person when I'm on my personal life versus business, right? And I have no routine with my kids. I mean, it is all over the place with my kids, and so I mean that it's probably why I just, you know, as soon as I'm done working, I probably get more stressed out in my day when I'm like doing like clean, like I hate cleaning right now. Like I have clothes all over my my chair right now. I won't show you, but I hate cleaning, and I have to clean this place and. I, if I could just pay for somebody to do it all for me so I could just focus on work, like that's what I would do. <laughs> I, can't, I actually can't believe you don't do that. That I do that. I have a cleaner that comes for two hours a week and it's $25 an hour, so $50 a week. I think that's so affordable. I will ma and it's not, it's like time. It, it's not that you don't yeah. have time. Everyone's got the same amount of time. With money, it's, it's about finding what you want to prioritize your money on. You have, you know, if you have a, job where you get a salary or whatever you have an infinite number of you know of dollars and it's just about making it work for that so I pay $50 a week for a cleaner and I pay $70 a week for a gardener and I think that is some of the seriously best spent money ever I, well, I mean I, I agree with you and you're now talking I used to I used to when yes I used to um, but then once I got out on my own I kind of I'm like I'll just do it, but I just hate it. Yeah. <laughs> so you're right. You're talking me into it. I'm probably going to start to look for a cleaner. Thank you. A cleaner and a, <laughs> and a virtual assistant. I, I, I don't yeah. know how someone like you can, who is so busy, can't, doesn't have some like outside help. Is it because you, is it because you've got financial goals that you're trying to hit or, or is it like what, what's, what stopped you? What well, I don't have, I don't, I don't have time to look for somebody. <laughs> Then I'm gonna have to train them and show them what to do. I don't have time for that. But I think the biggest thing is, um, and I'm gonna watch your video, I am, and I'll probably have a virtual assistant next week at this time after I watch your video. But um, I think the biggest thing is like, I've always been the, I'll just do it myself person. Um, and even though I, 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 I am, I've always, I love developing people. I love, you know, to uh, be a leader and to work with people and to watch them prosper and grow. I love doing that. But for myself, um, I just would rather do it myself. <laughs> and I know that that is probably not ideal. Um, but so I am going to, I'm going to look into it now that you're, I just need a little nudge, I think. Well, that's the, the biggest thing is that people who need a virtual assistant, for example, are pretty time poor they don't have time so trying to find a virtual assistant is like adding another and potentially several new tasks to their calendar that they need to do and yep. so you need to what the advice i got was actually when i was in laguna was to you have to find a way to wash out 95 percent so how can you find that top five percent and I, I won't go into too much because it's in that program but you have to whenever it comes to something like a virtual assistant, and I think it comes for any hire, even a cleaner potentially. How can you, how can you 
get rid of 95% of the noise in order to find the 5% of the quality, like the gems, the crystals that are gonna shine through. So. Okay, I like it. Mm. I like it. And then okay. that way it's, it's a really simple, easy process. It's really, it's actually fun. It's, it's actually fun. Mm -hmm. So then you can, um, yeah, you can enjoy right. the process. I'm doing it. All right, let's get into these 10 and 10. Number one. Remember, you can give me as long of a response as you like. Number one, wait, being okay, a... wait, wait, re re refresh the rules. Okay, so I'm gonna read out either a question or a comment or a statement or a single word, something like that. And I just want you to, whatever comes to your mind first, it can be a one word response or it could be as long as several minutes. Um, but I just want to know what comes oh, to Oh, 10 mind seconds. First. We gotta do this in 10 seconds. Yeah, I see, I know you, you're gonna need the challenge. You're gonna try and like time it and hit the, <laughs> exactly to the challenge to the uh to the time okay so number one being a businesswoman what does it mean to you yeah i i'm not there goes 10 there goes 10 seconds um <laughs> i um okay so but truly it sounds cliche but it, it is being able to help others and to help others be better number two taking the plunge into business yourself um um I, I've experienced a really good experience. Number three, you talked a lot about manifestation. Tell me about some of your best experiences with it. Um, I manifested for a year that I was going to buy the place that I'm in and that I was going to get it by March of, um, of this 2020 and I did. We actually talk a lot about manifestation on this show. It's come up with, I reckon, every single person that's been on it has talked about manifestation. They fully believe in it, they fully subscribe to it, and they all do it. It's part of their everyday lives. So, Well, it's I'm real. Really... It's true. Mm. It's so real. <laughs> Number four, healthy eating. Not nachos. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I... I Probably, probably an egg white, egg white low carb breakfast burrito. That I was spinach. That's what I, I think of because I love <laughs> it with hot sauce in it and Greek yogurt as my sour cream. Yeah. And spinach. Did I say spinach? So yeah. <laughs> that. <laughs> Number five, mindset. Not where I, not where I want it to be, but I'm getting there. Number six, meditation as part of your morning routine. Okay, so I have to say whatever comes to my head, right, yeah. about this? Yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't do it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> today has been kind of an all over day. <laughs> and how does that affect, how did it affect you today? Did it really play with how your day went? Um, it did. It, I mean, it, it truly did. I mean, I have nothing done on my to-do list that I'm staring at right now. So on my sticky notes. Yeah, it didn't. And, here and I, I ate nachos. Today. <laughs> I always make bad I always make bad decisions when I don't meditate and I eat nachos. Number seven, workplace education. This is in response to as opposed to like college university education. Don't waste your money going to college. <laughs> <laughs> Just get straight into the workplace and start earning and get real life experience. Don't go to college until you are truly ready to go to college and commit to doing it. Like the, if I could tell my older self, if I could tell my 20, my 18 year old self something, I would tell her that, that it's okay. You don't have to go to college just yet. You're going to be just fine. I like that. I'm going to come back to that one. I have a bonus question. Number eight, best thing about being a business consultant. Working with you. <laughs> But awesome. seriously, being able to work with international um, business owners, I think that is like, that is like, everybody should be jealous because that is the coolest thing ever. You I've met so and, many cool people. You need to come and visit all the studios that, you need, that you've helped and you need to come to Darwin one day. Yes. That's, Number, I'm manifesting that. All right, perfect. What is that sign? Is that like a world map behind you? No, it's Bruno, my bear. Oh, okay. I can only see the I love map. bears. Like a big map. No, I love bears. <laughs> Number nine. What do you tell your friends that you actually do right now? <laughs> I, I, when they ask me, I say I help. I help boutique fitness studio owners run their business. <laughs>
Number 10, this is one that I ask every single person. This one hasn't come up from what you've said in the interview so far. Um, so this is a common question. If you could go forward in time or back in time, where would you go and why? To go forward or back? I would go back and why? Yeah. You don't well, have to okay. share if you don't. <laughs> well, it, I will, I will. It's the first thing that popped my head, so I'm gonna play the game. Um, I would go back to my lower 20s, early 20s and teens, because my mom would be there. My mom passed away when I was 22, so. I had a feeling that you were gonna say, say that, and that's why I said you didn't yeah. have to share if you didn't want to. <laughs> that's where I would go. <laughs> Um, just, I, I mean, I've never done this before, but if you could go forward in time, where would it be? Like, I create what my life is? Yeah, like would saying? you just choose or 2100 or the year 5000 just because you wanted to ride on, you know, um, hoverboards or something? Is there a, a time in the future that you would go to? So well, he's answering the question I mean, for me. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'd be dead if I went forward to, 5,000, wouldn't I? Wouldn't we? No, well, yeah. no, I suppose this is the difference in mindset. No, because I'm saying <laughs> that you can, that you can, you don't have to, you could go back to the year five if you wanted to. So you could not Got time it. travel. Got it. Okay. Um, I don't want to be alive in 5,000. I, who knows what's, if whatever, who knows what's going to happen. Um, I, I would probably, I would go forward and, um, to when my boys were my age. So however long from now that is, just to see how they've come and grown and all of that. That's pretty cool, that's very interesting. And I wanna, you know, I would do that because I would wanna make sure that I saw that just in case I didn't for some reason, so yeah. Yeah. Mark, and this has been a pleasure. Do you have any final words of wisdom that you would like to share? Um, otherwise, we will find out how the best way to contact you is on social media if you would like people to be able to reach out to you but um if you have any words of wisdom what would they be i don't know um <laughs> you put me on the spot with this one i don't know i don't know um i mean if you're a boutique studio out there and you're listening to this or your training studio um you know, no matter you know whether you come to studio grow or not i mean i i would say i would for sure say that you need to make sure that you are um doing memberships and you're having reoccurring revenue and this would be the opportunity for you to really know your numbers and to make sure that you are are focused on on setting goals and focused on how you're going to hit those goals um so i would say that just because that's what i'm heavily in and and if you're a boutique studio owner i think that's just so important to not have in your business what is the best way to contact you um you can email me um my first name m-y-k-e-n at studiogrow.co. Mike, and I just want to acknowledge you for all the work you do in helping businesses and supporting them, particularly through COVID-19, but all the time, and the success and the lives that you have changed in those people who um, you work with. So thank you for that. Yeah. You're so sweet. Thank this you. Is, <laughs> this has been a pleasure. Thank you for being on the Mind Your Body Show. Thank you.